So let me show you how to create high quality realistic renders using D5 Render and the SketchUp model of a lake retreat I designed in undergrad. I will cover these areas of D5 Render while creating these two images. And trust me, you do not want to miss this video. Installing D5 Render is a simple, straightforward process. You can follow the link in the description box to download it and also download the converter to whichever 3D modeling software you use. I use SketchUp so I will download that, but you can see that D5 Render is compatible with other softwares. I've been using D5 Render for over a month now and I first had the GTX 1060, but it was a little slow so I upgraded to the RTX 360 and it's so much better and smoother. So if you do have one of the lower graphics card, know that it will still work, but it will be slow. But you can also check out the rest of the system requirements of D5 Render using the link in the description box. A cool thing is that you can download some express scenes if you wanted to test out how the software works and you can see the kind of images you can export. You can use D5 Render for free, but you won't have access to all of the assets library available in the pro version, but they also have an educational license to students and educators, so make sure that you do apply if you are eligible. This is the SketchUp model that I will be using. As you can see, you want a pretty good model that is quite detailed so that all you have to do in D5 Render is apply materials and assets. If I click on this button here through the D5 converter, this will start D5 Render and it actually opens up pretty quickly. It's gonna open to the model that I've been using, which already has all of the materials and assets. But if this is your first time using D5 Render, your model will look exactly like SketchUp. You can use the D5 converter to update your model. So if I make any changes in my SketchUp model, I can click on this update here and it will automatically update the D5 render. Now let's talk about the interface. The interface is actually quite intuitive. I have literally taught myself how to use it in the past couple of weeks. I could definitely use it in the first get go to render a few images. So it's, it's very easy to learn, but let's go over everything to make sure that you have a good head start. So located at the top of the interface, you have a collection of shortcuts to common D5 render features. And from the left to the right, you've got the menu, import model and the asset library. At the top of the asset library, you can switch between the online library and the local custom library. And you can switch between models, materials and particles. And then on the left, you have a category list, which you can use to search different assets. And you can also add to favorites. And you have a wide range of assets to choose from. And all you have to do to use them is download and then drag into your model. Then you've got this list which is located on the left side of the interface in which you can easily manage the resources related to the scenes in your project. The list is divided into three parts. The top part is the scenes list. So you've got all of your saved scenes and then the middle is layers. And the bottom half is list of resources divided into an object list containing light models and other entries. And then you also have a list of imported models. You have a scene controls which are distributed in the top left and top right of the scene. This tool allows you to select materials and edit them. At the top, we have lights tool, path animation tool, vegetation tool, particles, and camera settings. I uncheck the auto exposure because I like to edit that myself because for my model, it looks a little too bright. Then you've got field of view, clip and plane, and focus settings. Then you've got some standard view options, perspective or two point perspective, which is helpful if you want to keep your lines straight, which you obviously should. Then you've got the top, bottom, front, back, which are helpful if you want to export elevations or plans and so forth. The display settings has this grid, which is helpful in setting up views which is the rule of thirds. Then you've got different modes, which is cool because you can export these for various reasons, like a clay model. For preview quality, mine is set to high, but I recommend setting it to middle or low if you don't have the best graphics card. Although I do switch to middle sometimes, even with my RTX 360, 
just when I'm moving around the model because it can get kind of slow with all of the assets visible. Now there are two ways to navigate through the model. One is orbit and the other one is fly. I personally choose orbit as it's similar to how I move with SketchUp or Revit, but you choose whichever one is easier for you. Now orbit, the camera moves around the object in the center of the screen with the combination of the mouse wheel, right click and the shift key. With fly, you can use the right mouse button with the WASD on the keyboard to use the center of the screen as a moving target. And in fly mode, you can increase the speed with shift and slow down the speed with the space bar. There are two methods to edit in the environment, one is Geo and Sky and the other is HDRI. To edit the sun, you can drag the sun angle control lever to change the time period and the sun angle. And as that changes, the color of the sky will dramatically change, showing the light color in the early morning, noon, dusk and other time periods. This parameter is used to correct the direction of the north compass. You can also add clouds, fog, wind, and rain using these parameters. And if you slide rain all the way to the right, the rain changes to snow. And you can also control its strength and puddle values. Next is HDRI, which is an abbreviation of High Dynamic Range Image. And the common image formats are HDR or EXR. So D5 Render has nine different HDR panoramic environment maps built in for different atmosphere. And if you select one and then zoom out, you can see that panorama. And you can adjust the light and rotation value of the HDRI, but you can also add a sun feature. And the main reason is that not every sun in the HDRI panorama is bright enough to cast realistic shadows. Then you have similar settings as before, fog, wind, and rain, but you can't edit the clouds because that is determined by the HDRI. Under effects, you can apply a lot, change the exposure, contrast, highlight, tint, and etc. And you can also apply outlines to your model. Now let's set up some views. So I'm going to use the orbit navigation mode to just orbit around the model and pick a view that I think works. And then from the scene list, I can add that scene into my list and go back into camera settings and make sure that the lines are straight. Click in on this and then go back and update your view. And you can see that I've already set up three other views. So if I click on any of them, the model automatically changes to that view. Now, what's really important is that after you set up all of those scenes is to export them and just see those images outside of the 3D rendering model. And it's okay if some images you're not happy with, that's kind of the point of it actually. Some images you do like, you can go ahead and move forward with those. I've already added materials to this model, but I'll show you how to do that. All you have to do is go into your assets and then change it from particles or models into materials and then download any material that you like and then you can just apply it to the face or the object. I've selected one that I've already downloaded, but you can change a lot of its settings like you can make it bigger, smaller. You can rotate it, change its roughness, metallic, all kinds of different adjustments. You can also make it triplanar so that it blends all of the surfaces, specifically for this building because my walls are slanted and even the roof. So some faces are not straight, they're hyperbolic. So this feature really helps with that, but it's not with every single material. And you can download different materials and just test them out, see which one you like best. And I also want to show you the grass material in particular. So if you click on grass and you apply one of the grass texture, you can see that it applies it as a displacement layer. You can see that on the right there it says displacement. If you click on that, you can change that into grass actually. And you can see different other material templates. If you change that into grass, you have actually 3D grass and you have three different styles to choose from. You can also adjust the height, the color, the density, the trim, and so many other settings. 
and at any point if you close the asset library and use this tool you can reselect the materials and then change them again and you can also make materials lighter or darker so if i click on this color here which is set to white if i make it darker it makes the material darker so d5 render has a wide range of trees and people and characters and furniture that you can choose from so let's start with trees for example i can click on any one of these trees and place them individually and then i can press ctrl z to undo each one of these trees but if i wanted to apply a larger amount of trees i can use this brush tool and adjust the radius and the density and i can brush in some trees which is super helpful if i wanted to scatter some of these trees around my model make it look natural however you can't control z individual trees you're gonna have to use the eraser tool to erase it but you can select up to six models so that you can scatter around the model and, and the more variety you have in your trees and assets the the more realistic it's going to look now if I place an individual tree, I can press B on my keyboard. If you have these three arrows, it means that you can move it around the model. But if you press V again, you can scale the model or the tree. And then on the right here, you can uncheck the link next to the size and that way you can scale it unproportionately. So if I wanted to make this tree significantly taller, I can. But of course it will look a bit strange, so do that with caution. And then on the right, you can also change the location, the rotation and the size. So you've got two ways to do that. And I usually use the one on the right if I wanted specific numbers. So if I wanted to rotate something to a 90 degree, I can do that. One thing is when you do use a brush, it doesn't go to your object list on the left. It actually goes to brush history. So if you double click on the model, you can see on the right the brush histories that I've got. And if you click on it, it'll show you a thumbnail of the trees and then you can edit it, apply again or erase it. But if I delete it, then it's gone for good. You know, you cannot undo that. But you can also use the brush settings without actually using the brush. I want to place this tree, for example, randomly with random sizes. So I could do that and it will work and it will be like individual trees that I can undo or delete. And the last thing that I want to show you is, for example, if I wanted to add some bushes or grass or herbs or flowers to this field, I can select a few and then instead of painting it using the brush and a small radius, I can increase the radius all the way to the top and it will scatter it across the material. Of course, it's going to make the model slower. So if you do have a lower graphics card, I recommend not doing that and just painting whatever is necessary. D5 Render has four different lighting options and using it is really easy. All you have to do is select one and then drag it to wherever you want to add it. And the good thing is that you can change it and adjust the settings even if you're not really close to the light source. So I can even go back to my view and then adjust the settings that way. I can even make it brighter or warmer or cooler. And there's four different options. So you've got point light, spotlight, strip light and rectangular light. If you go to the right here where there's a camera icon, if you click on that, you go into this window and you can export your images. So at the bottom here, you can change the field of view, the aspect ratio, even the preset size, or you can add your own custom size. And then you also have channels. I like to export the renders at a minimum 4,000 pixels so that they're high quality. And if someone zooms in on any aspect of the image, it's still high quality and not pixelated. You've got in the option a channels, you can choose to export with channels or not. If you're just testing an image, I suggest without the channels because the channels obviously makes the rendering speed slower so it takes a bit longer. But if this is your final render, do export the channels because it's going to help you so much with the post-production part. But in my opinion, I just saw this whole process of exporting the image that it's very, very quick. I remember on V-Ray, it used to take me like hours to export an image. But with this one, maximum on a 4K with all channels, maybe 10 minutes and that's it. So I was really pleased with that. 
The program completely exceeded my expectations with the quality of the render and the time needed to create it. But I wanted to do another image to kind of show the context. So this is the model that I've created. If I go into my scene, I really like the scene that I created because there's more of a depth to it right now because you've got the foreground and then the building is right in the middle instead of how it was before. There's more of a story here. And I've added people, I've added birds. I've added animals and different types of nature. I'm not one to toot my own horn, but honestly, what a stunning image. And what I love most about it is how realistic the trees and shrubs look in the foreground, because sometimes they can look fake with other programs that I've used. It also does not need post-production at all. I'm only going to make the foreground darker in Photoshop to enhance its depth. To darken the foreground, I'm first going to duplicate the original layer and using the burn tool, I can paint that on the edges of the image to bring the focus to the center. And to help me with the selection of the foreground, I can use the material ID to select the trees and the shrubs before I use the burn tool. You guys need to try this software out as it's one of the best real-time rendering softwares on the market. It's quick, accurate and consistent. I've never had it crash on me and it also has an easy learning curve. And you can also use the dodge tool on the building to truly give this image a focal point. That's the final image. This is before and this is after. I really like how it came out. I mean, I don't think I've ever done a render this good. So D5 render will definitely be in my workflow from now on. And I actually quite enjoyed the software. So I played around with how this building would look like in spring, fall and winter. So I really wanted to include that in this video as well, but, but the video was getting quite long. If you do want to see how I've created these seasons, please comment down below. And if there's enough people that want it, I will create a video for it. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Thank you once again to D5 Render for sponsoring this video. And I'm Rasha Shururu and I will see you next time.